Welcome to this week in the world of wrestling. Welcome to TwitWow, the best wrestling podcast made for wrestling fans, by wrestling fans, on the web today. I'm John, that's my cohort and commentary, Ashton, and this is our NXT review. Now, this was the fallout from NXT TakeOver Rival, and I'm going to steal a line from my cohort and commentary here. This show was stacked from top to bottom. Did what I say a... that? Yeah, you did. I don't you remember saying show. that, but I'll take credit anyway. <laughs> yeah, you did. I distinctly remember you saying that because I knew I was going to use it in this review. But anyway, yeah, from top to bottom, this show was just fantastic. Uh, definitely, I think, paved the way for some future storylines, which I really like. Uh, continuation of some old rivalries that we saw, you know, have be really punctuated at the last TakeOver special. Some debuts in between. It was crazy, man. What would you think of it? We got a little old, a little new, but everything was awesome. Absolutely. Perfectly said. And with that said, let's get right into our first segment. Heat of the night. And you got to be kidding me. I don't have a single complaint about this show tonight. I mean, again, just absolutely loaded. I really felt like I got my fill this week. Absolutely. I don't actually have any complaints, but if I really wanted a nitpick, it would probably be that we got our Solomon Crow debut, but he didn't have a match. That's the only thing that I would be able to really kind of like, if I go over the show with a fine tooth comb, that would be the only thing that I pick out that I would complain about. Yeah, very interesting how he debuted, but we'll get more in-depth with that when we actually arrive at that segment. So with that out of the way, let us roll right on to our NXT review. And we start off with a video package recapping TakeOver Rival, uh, all those highlights. But then as far as the actual show, we open up actually with William Regal. And he addresses the, uh, you know, the goings on at TakeOver Rival, the whole fallout. Uh, specifically, of course, Kevin Owens becoming the new NXT champion. I love how formally Regal treats this, the seriousness with which he embraces it, because he says, now let me make clear, you know, an NXT championship can change champions by pinfall, submission, or referee stoppage due to KO. Yep. Which, thankfully, somebody put in the connection, you know, Kevin Owens, KO, KO victory. So, thanks oh, for yeah, the because... triangle there, Regal. Because nobody else on the planet made that connection. Well, either. I'm saying commentary really didn't seem to make the connection, so I'm glad Regal that I'm saying somebody in WWE. Oh, like, I see what you're saying. Okay, yes, yeah, so. definitely then, yeah, because yeah. They, they hadn't really acknowledged it, but it seems like everybody and their mother on Reddit, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, has said something about it. So. Oh, yeah, you, you know wrestling fans always got their finger on the pulse and stuff like that. Yeah. But, um, you know, he, he says that uh, Kevin Owens says he, he's a prize fighter. Well, he needs to understand that he doesn't make the decisions around here. I do, and tonight he is going to be competing against Adrian Neville in a non-title match. He does specify that while Adrian Neville is not the number one contender, because of course he lost to Finn Bauer at the TakeOver special, that he does have a chance to get a measure of retribution because Kevin Owens had taken him out. So, you know, that's pretty much that. And then when we actually get the opening of NXT, we do open up with Kevin Owens. Yeah, we do. And he comes out and he cuts just par for the course for him, but an amazing promo. Absolutely. Definitely a divided crowd still of fight Owens fight. And, it's uh, never going to change. Get yeah. used to it. You know what? Better that than let's go Owens. Owens sucks. Because yeah. I really like the dynamic of an actual split between I love Sami Zayn and I love Kevin Owens. It's great stuff to behold. That's what happens when the guy that the crowd is split about is a heel. Exactly. But when the guy that the crowd split about is a face, well, I mean, the the half that doesn't like that guy isn't going to cheer for the bad guy because then they just look like jackasses, although sometimes they still do it. But for the most part, that's that's pretty much the reason for that being the way it is. Right, right. Uh, Owens cuts right to the heart of the matter, man. He says, look, I, I know some people tuck up issue with the way that I won this NXT championship. And he says, but those people don't have the right uh, to criticize me. I did what I had to do for myself and for my family. And the important thing is, is that Sami Zayn is now 
the past. A great line. And then he follows it up with an even better one. And he says, and what do you do when you're done with the past? You look towards the future, and the future is Finn Balor. So immediately, like, laying the groundwork for what should be his first formal title offense. Uh, and he says, Finn, you know, I, I understand you're the one contender. You go to Regal, you pick a date, and I'll be there. But know this, what happened at TakeOver is going to happen to you. Because I'm not going to let anyone take this away from me or my family. And he leaves. So mm-hmm. I love it, man. Absolutely. Great stuff. Great, great stuff. Um, this promo was awesome, and I just love that rather than just kind of coming out and talking about how much he hates the crowd and trying super hard to get over as a heel, he just kind of lets it go, brushes it off, and talks about what is on his mind, and that's Finn Balor right now. I love it. Well, I think it just fits so in line with the Kevin Owens character, you know, not caring so much about the extraneous circumstances or or the environment, you know, around him. He's just focused on the task at hand. The task at hand before this, becoming NXT champion or, again, fighting for a prize. Now the task is keeping it, and everything else is just noise, and I love that approach. Yep, absolutely. All right, so up next we had our first match of the night. And uh, Elias Samson was already in the ring when we when we uh, saw the match, but uh, Rhino is back and he's in NXT, and the crowd freaking loves him. So I mean, hey, like I said earlier, we got a little old but a little new, and this was a little of both because Rhino is an old son of a gun, but he's new to NXT. Absolutely, he is, and he made his mark straight away. Fans were clamoring out of the gate for the gore, and I, I really, the only two things I remember, because I think those are the only two things in the match, were that Rhino got kind of like a like a belly-to-belly kind of like exploder-like suplex, and then with Samson in the corner, uh, Rhino went in the opposite corner, and he set up for the gore, and what I love about this here, I've never been the biggest Rhino fan, but what I liked what he did here was kind of headbanging along with the gore chance and really getting into it, and then he hit it, I'll admit it did look pretty nice, and uh, he gets the pin on Elias Sampson, so Rhino wins in his NXT debut, and that sentence, I still can't wrap my head around it. So I know, right? Done. There's something not right about that. It's it's not right, but it feels so good. It does, and I, I mean, you don't believe us. Again, look to the crowd, because they were totally into this. I love the respect that they have for um, for guys that have had the kind of career that Rhino has had. You know, it's the same kind of reception they showed Scotty Tuhati when he appeared all those months yep. ago, and now Rhino's getting some more... Dude, that, I think that... I mean, at this point, I think that was over a year ago, believe it or not. Yeah, I know, right? But I Because I, just... I think that was last year... Actually, no, you know what? Wasn't that just a couple months after Raw 1000? Because that was around the same time that all the Legends were coming back? I think you might be right about that. So that was closer to two years ago, actually. I mean, it's like a year and a half, but still, Wow. Yeah, and even, even then, like, NXT has shown that it knows how to use... I don't want to use the word legend, because that seems hyperbolic, but definitely your old-time veterans. The so, nostalgia like, pop. The nostalgia pop. That's a good phrase, Ashton. We'll definitely keep that going forward. So it'll be interesting to see how they use Rhino. And before I get ahead of myself, though, and make the transition, do you have anything else you want to say about this match? Well, I think that this is the perfect transition, because up next we had a Finn Balor interview, but he didn't get to say much, because uh, Kevin he said something about how Kevin Owens... Fancies himself a prize fighter, but I fight for a prize too. The NXT champion, shh, and then Rhino walked in and I'd Balor up and smiled and then just kind of walked out. So apparently we're getting a Rhino Finn Balor program. I don't know how I feel about that. I dig it. Yet. I dig it. I mean, the crowd loves Rhino, but if he gets into the ring with Finn Balor, he's going he's gonna to start getting a little bit of that heat. And a guy with the look of Rhino and what he's about, I think, does better as a heel anyway, in my personal opinion. So I think this might be good. And you know what? Here's the thing, too, that I'm thinking about. If they want to hold off on Bauer Owens, which I think they will, Rhino is a good person to say, now this is what Finn Bauer has to look forward to when he faces Kevin Owens. Because they're both similar in that kind of stature. They're both bigger guys. And I mean, whoever is in a fight against Rhino, I mean, unless it's like Baron Corbin, but whoever's in a fight against Rhino is pretty much immediately the underdog. So, like, you don't want to use Rhino as a baby face going up against a heel to try and get a heel over because, I mean, nobody's going to buy Rhino 
being the sympathetic underdog. <laughs> right, right. So you know what? Actually, the more I think about it, the more I, I think this does a brilliant job, hopefully, of making it appear that Finn Balor is indeed capable of beating Kevin Owens. Yep. So I actually like this, and I really believe that's the purpose Rhino is here to serve. So great pick up there. Yeah, great Great, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a great decision because if you really think about it, like, a lot of people say that Bull Dempsey looks like Fat Rhino. Right. And when Kevin Owens showed up, everyone said, well, this is everything that Bull Dempsey should have been. So there's a definite parallel between Rhino and Owens. Definitely. We'll see what happens, man. And up next, the villains are in a match. I know. Always good to see those guys. Um definitely seem to be on the same page you know but commentary did bring up that you know blake and murphy got to where they were because the vaudevillains were kind of their stepping stone yep. so they hope that uh you know they mean in commentary hopes that the vaudevillains have refined their game plan so again commentary i love nxt commentary man because they're so on point and they're doing the job of relaying the story and keeping the story on point so good and it's so important so we find out that the vaudevillains are facing enzo and big Cass. and again because you had so many great lines tonight ash i'm going to steal another one from you you said it best with the crowd reaction these guys are freaking rock stars man they are i even have that in my notes too because they as soon as that spanish guitar hits on the titan tron people lose their minds and it's rightfully so because these guys are awesome but it's just awesome to me that that we have an entity in nxt that's this universally loved like say what you want about Sami Zayn, people were cheering against him everyone loves enzo and big Cass. completely agree with you so on point the interesting thing though ash is that enzo and big Cass are going through their their usual promo and that's not to denigrate in any way i get into it every time but when Enzo's introducing Carmella, she does get booze, and they're very clear and very evident. And so she I, even had, like, a face, like, wow, you don't like me? Okay, I guess I see how it is. Yeah, so it, it's interesting that they're in this position to, to face a team like the Vaudevillains, and yet they're still having Carmella tag along, and she's bringing this heat. Yeah. So, I, I'm, you know, we got, we got that story still going on, too, I think, even though we really haven't seen any developments, I don't think, in a little bit. At least none that were noteworthy. So then, Ashton, I hope you have this in your notes because I don't even remember what Big oh, yeah. Cass called something. Oh, yeah. I'm going oh, yeah. to give it to you then. Aiden, I can't stop hating English and sweet as butterscotch Simon Gotts. Holy crap, Big Cass the wordsmith, folks. <laughs> He's so good. And, dude, the best part is when they actually started the match, Gotch started the match, and the crowd was chanting butterscotch. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, and then, of course, he did, you know, there's only one word to describe you, so let me spell it out for you. Yeah. And he got so pumped, and the crowd got so pumped, and they did soft. And, and, and I love the, the way he teased it, too, because he, he said, let me, so I'm going to, and then the crowd did spell it out for you. But he just kept, and then when they finished, he did the spell it out for you. It was just so good. I love it. Dude, I mean, I, th I think it was you that has said, because we've talked about, I mean, we've been doing NXT Twitter out for some time now, and we've talked about Enzo and Big Cass for just as long. I uh, think our the, first episode of NXT back from the hiatus was in, I want to say, November 2013-ish. Yeah. And so it's been about a year and three months. Yeah, we've man. been back. And Enzo and Big Cass have played such a huge role in that time. And I think it was you that said, like, these guys are the kind of new, new age outlaws with their charisma and everything else. And they're just going to set the tag team division on fire when they come up together. It's going to be really wonderful. Finally, I think, uh, some something new for the crowd to embrace outside of the Usos when their time comes. It's yeah, Usos, you've been replaced. Yeah, pretty much. And <laughs> speaking of replaced... I gotta tell you, man, vaudevillains are not what they used to be, and I don't mean that in a bad way, like, oh, their matches are sucking this and that. No, I mean in terms of momentum, because right. try as they might, they lost again. I mean, I'm just gonna cut right to it, guys. Enzo and Big Cass, with the upset, Cass got... I mean, hey, this might be leading to a, a vaudevillains breakup, but uh, just kind of changing gears very quickly, I just want to say I absolutely love two things. First of all, 
The crowd has gotten so into Enzo and Big Cass that they now chant, how you do it, how you do it, how you do it, when they're in the ring. So that's awesome. But second of all, I love that Enzo Amore's finishing move is Big Cass's big boot. <laughs> it just seems so perfect for him. Uh, it that, does. That, yeah. He has almost no offense. He punch, 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 kick cover roll up like he he's basically mikey whipwreck but big Cass shows up and dominates and enzo's like oh that guy's knocked out i should go for the cover and it's a three count absolutely man absolutely and and here's the thing two things that i want to know very quickly one aiden english does eat the pin again he why do you the, say again? Did he eat the pin against the uh, Dubstep Cowboys too? He's, eat, he's eating the pin with Dubstep Cowboys for their rematch against the Lucha Dragons. Aiden English ate the pin there, so this is the third straight oh, time. Oh, wow, he's yeah. I've kept so track. Simon Gotch might end up getting a little pissy about it. Hey, that's what I, Well, what have I been telling you, dude, in conversation? I think Aiden English is going to go face in the breakup, yep. and Simon Gotch is going to remain the heel, yep. which, as a guy who actually saw this video, I don't know if it – what it was for um but you know really detailing simon gotch and all that stuff he definitely has the type of persona and uh and all that stuff that would better qualify as a heel aiden english as a face is still awkward territory that i don't want to tackle just yet but we'll see what happens i give everything a chance in nxt oh the... please dude aiden english would be amazing as a face he comes out and sings about his douchebag heel opponent yeah the crowd would eat that up the crowd I... was already starting to love him before he got with gotch to be the vaude villain so he yeah he's gonna be a fine baby face that is true that is very true but the second point i wanted to make because the one thing that um, I'm going to kind of do a little reset here and say that Big Cash said was that, you know, Vaudevillains, you've already gotten your title shots, and tonight we're going to prove that we deserve ours. Yep. And here's the thing, dude. We've talked about Enzo and Big Cash before, um, and I really feel like it's time. Like, I could buy them beating Blake and Murphy for the tag titles. I feel like this is the perfect set of champions where Enzo and Big Cass actually look credible rather than babyface fodder to garner sympathy and, oh, you know, try as they might, they just can't get the job done. So it's very interesting. That's kind of how the tag titles have been since they came off the Ascension, though. Because the Ascension is really the only... Well, well, yeah, yeah, I will say that. The Ascension is the only tag team champion or the only tag team that have been champions that I felt like were that sort of like, who is going to beat these guys kind of champion where everyone else are, are the kind of champions where like they could lose to anyone and it would be believable. Absolutely. So I feel like this is the ideal time to really get Enzo and Big Cass in the title picture. Well, and if Enzo, if Enzo and Big Cass would win the titles, they would continue that trend because they would be, kind of that same thing where anyone could beat them and it would be believable absolutely absolutely but you know in that same answer they get the win enzo's kind of making the belt motion like we want the belt him and big cash so you know that i really think that set it up and if that wasn't confirmation enough blake and murphy interrupt mm -hmm. and they're healing it up here bro yeah they 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 didn't even talk to Enzo and Big Cass, really. They just kind of hit on Carmella and told her that if she wanted to leave these two weasels that they could. And honestly, I'm going to go there. I think that she should. I think Blake and Murphy should be the heel champions. Carmella should turn on Enzo and Big Cass, cost them their first tag, tag team championship match, and join the dubstep Cowboys as a trio. I think that would be perfect because she's a heel already. She is a heel already, and again, when I was talking about, you know, how Kevin Owens acts and his mannerisms and him ignoring the crowd being in line with his character, a betrayal like that would be in line with Carmella's character because she talks about how she's fabulous, this princess has an affinity for the finer things, so why wouldn't you go where the money is and the right. money's with the tag team gold? Right, so, and obviously she's not going to go hang out with the Lucha Dragon. She can barely even understand them. Exactly, exactly. So <laughs> this is actually a really good fit, and... And it averts what I have been scared of from day one since they started this angle. Enzo and Big Cass maintain their friendship, and they're not going to have it dissolve over a woman. So thank you. I hope that's the route they take, dude. Yeah. I can so get on board with that. Yep, absolutely. All right. Adrian Neville interview. He has gotten so much better on the mic. I'm so proud of him. I, I know, right? Like, his delivery is so on point because um, he actually, and I love how he puts this in perspective. Because he readily acknowledges to the interviewer whose name is Greg, 
Um, that's all we know him as, so that's just what we're going we're gonna to just call him Interviewer Greg. Interviewer Greg. That, yes, he came up short against Finn Balor. You know, he knows which terrific competitor Balor is. But he says it's actually a relief because he has been so used to being the hunted that now he can revert back to the role of being the hunter. And he says, being the hunter, one of the benefits is that I get to prioritize what's personal to me in my life, and what's personal to me is Kevin Owens. He said, you know, I had to watch Kevin Owens as he as he beat up and decimated my good friend Sami Zayn, but he also beat me up and made me leave Full Sail University, I think he said like a month ago, on a stretcher. And don't think I forgot about that. Yep. And I think he said how tonight the beating that he's going to give Kevin Owens is one that he will never forget. So Neville's focused, man. Good stuff. Absolutely. He is on point and I don't know, man. It's I like that he was showing fire here. It's not something you see very often. And I even I think I even said that to you while we were watching it. I love that Adrian Neville is finally showing some fire cuz all up until now it wasn't so much passion as it was just kind of smarmy, like mild smugness that he's had. And now it's like he's gotten his ass handed to him and he knows that he isn't, he can't just be smug about this match with Owens because Owens has already owned his face before. So pissed baby faces. You'd be surprised how much it works people. Uh, Cause I love it too, man. I can totally get behind it. So great stuff from Neville and moving on. What do we have next? Ashton. Up next, we had a, a couple of promos from women, actually. Bailey had a, a promo backstage, and it was super generic. It was basically just, I didn't win this time, but I will eventually, and that's about it. <laughs> yeah, and then you get Becky Lynch. I enjoyed her work here, though. Yeah, this was good, because she said the Fatal 4 Away was the biggest match for her career, and she was this close, this close to winning the title, and she would have. If it wasn't for Bailey and those meddling kids. Uh, but she says, you know, uh, I, I lost. I came up short. But if I have to be happy for anybody winning, I'm glad it was Sasha. And I'm even happier that Charlotte was the loser. Yep. So, yeah, Becky keeping that heel persona intact. Yep. I love it. These two were uh, – I shouldn't say these two because Bailey's was painfully generic and I just didn't get into it at all. But Becky and Adrian Neville being the two that I was referring to. Um, very impressive on the mic, especially considering, and I know Vince wouldn't agree with me here, but considering that they have these accents, I think they're doing great. I'm sure Vince would be like, they're terrible. I can't understand what the hell they're saying. <laughs> yeah. So after this, um, I, I don't want to CJ Parker. I was going to say, cause we were talking, I was talking about baby faces getting pissed. I was going to be like, well, speaking of pissed, we get CJ Parker and yeah, he, <laughs> He's sick of it. it. He hates all you people, and he's ending it. He's ending the show, and then he puts up a sign that says he's taking over the takeover, and he starts laying out caution tape. You know, i got to be honest. I I really feel like I would have become a bigger C.J. Parker fan by now, contingent on if he appeared more regularly than what he does. He's so good, dude. (laughs) Because as a heel, it just, when he said, I'm sick of all you people, I lost it. And then when he's breaking out the caution tape, I am like, oh, shit, son, we got props. I know, he's so good. Oh, but the, the speaking of props, we get some glitches going on between the Titan Tron and the screen that you're watching at at home. And uh, next thing you know, we get, uh, we get our, our first view at somebody that John's been waiting for for a really long time. So go for it. Absolutely. I mean, we get that this is not a test. And then Solomon Crow appears on the other side of the ring and starts pummeling C.J. Parker, just beating the crap out of him. I will say the whole atmosphere had kind of a feel of what Jericho's debut did back in 99. It did. It felt like such a big deal. Yeah, it did, and especially like with all the technology and all that stuff. Uh, you know, that I think just kind of the icing on the cake. But he's really like pummeling him, and the only like really offensive maneuver we see Crow nail is like this this uh, this splash where he goes off the ropes. It was kind of so flies. weird though. Like, what do you even call that? Like, it wasn't it wasn't really a springboard, and it wasn't really a slingshot. It was like. I don't even know what to call it, man. And then, honestly, you say it's a splash. It looked almost like a headbutt to me. 
Yeah, as John was saying, it looked like a headbutt to him. To me, I'm going to stick by that it was a splash. Uh, I don't know. But then, pretty much C.J. Parker's out, so I guess the show's been uh, taken back from C.J. Parker. And hell, Solomon Crow even grabs a mic, and he says, we now return you to your regularly scheduled programming, and he leaves. So, very interesting. And here's what I like about the whole vibe of the Solomon Crow character is it's the same thing that I really liked about Kevin Owens. It's incredibly fluid. He could be a babyface for a very brief time, but I could easily believe a character with this type of gimmick going heel at any point. And I think that's a huge benefit. So I think for now he is the babyface, but I'm going to tell you right now, this guy ain't going to be shocked if we see Solomon Crow on the heel side of things in the future. So Yeah, yeah absolutely. Stuff. I love and the... He even like he even got on a mic and said something about how now we we we, we now yeah we said? now return you to your regularly scheduled program. broadcast he said broadcast yeah, yeah broadcast. but yeah that was I, I like that he kept it succinct and I gotta tell you man he made me a fan in one outing I I dig he's different I dig the the well I knew about the look before but it looks like he's lost some weight he's a little bit leaner. He the, the hair is still there. He's got a little bit of a, a goatee going on, some sweet chin music. He, you know, he's he, he's got really he's really explosive. I never noticed that before about him. Yeah, he, look, let me, let me tell you something firsthand. As a guy who would go to Force One shows virtually every month, and he was our champion for nine months. This guy is explosive. He can really bring a lot of I think energy to promos. I don't know where they're going with this character, but I knew him all the way there. He's in WWE now. This is his opportunity to take. So I'm curious to see if he can do it or not. And this feels like a main event gimmick. It does. It really does. I'm telling you. I I could really see him going heel and being... I mean, I know Kevin Owens has really got a monopoly on that space. But if anybody would be capable of being a solid number two, at least it is Solomon Crowe if he does go heel in the future, which I just have a strong gut feeling he will. So I think he might be a heel by the time he wrestles his first match, to be honest. Yeah, maybe. I, I mean, I'm not, and you know what? Maybe that's just me. You got to understand like me going into it. There's a lot of subjectivity there and a lot of bias because he was a heel for most of his force one run. He was the heel for the entire time he was champion. So I know his heel work and I, it just feels more natural for him to be in that role. Uh, he didn't do bad as a baby face, but I never really fully bought into it as a heel. Yeah. He's a detestable bastard. And I would really love to see this kind of gimmick messing with people's personal lives and hijacking shows and who knows the havoc he can wreak. I mean, you and I had that big in-depth discussion many, 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 many moons ago about this gimmick. It's so socially relevant and there's so much potential there. And if I can believe in any promotion to have the backbone and the balls to take the fullest advantage of it, it's NXT. So that's all I really wanted to say about that. Yeah, absolutely. I won't disagree with you at all. All right. So up next, and by the way, I love that you are with him the way I've always been with FCW guys. Yeah, absolutely. You get to be that informant, dude. You're like the the reconnaissance for this guy. I know, right? Finally, I get that role. It feels good to be you for a change. I gotta say, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not the one like sitting with my head already eagerly, like, yeah, yeah. I'm getting edumacated today. Now I'm edumacating. It feels so good. It's great, isn't it? It does. It, it's quite different. It's a nice change of pace. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens when you watch more wrestling than everyone else. There you go. <laughs> All right, now we can move on. Up next, we had Sasha Banks versus Blue Pants. And before we even start talking about this match, oh my god, I love everything about what they've given to old Blue Pants. First of all, she has big cast singing the Price is Right song as her entrance. Second of all, she's got straight from the clearance rack as where she's built from. Third of all, she has blue text on her freaking nameplate. And fourth of all, the ring announcer introduces her as, Oh, blue pants. (laughs) I love everything. It's so good, dude, because I think what it tells me is, is they know what they've got. They heard how receptive the crowd was to the idea that she wears blue pants as her attire, and they've ran with it. And you know what, though? I don't think it makes it any hokier, any cheesier. I think it keeps the di- – I can't even believe I'm saying this about a gimmick about blue pants. But it keeps the dignity of it intact. And so, yeah, she, she's like that. Sasha can't believe it. You're just like, you're kidding me, right? Like, I'm the new NXT Women's Champion. 
and you're telling me this is my first outing since winning the title. And she even tells Blue Pants, like, look, 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 you're a scrub, and I'm here, so I'm going to hold the rope in for you. You can leave. You can leave. And, you know, she can't believe that the crowd is actually that divided because we do have, like, let's go Blue Pants, let's go Sasha Chance. But uh, Blue Pants, she's kind of struggling a little bit, like, man, I just really want to have this match, but okay, if you think I should leave. And she starts to leave, but then she kicks Sasha out of the ring, and Sasha just loses it. Like, what? What? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And, like, just, oh, my God, Blue Pants is the worst. <laughs> so, um, you know, after that, uh, they have a little bit of a back and forth. And, and Blue Pants, I think, is still portrayed almost as, like, the female Enzo Amore, where... Her, the primary aspects of her offense are really just pinning combinations and just basic offensive maneuvers. And reversals. And reversals. Um, and then I think the funniest part actually came from you and me when we were talking because Sasha then quickly retook control and she was setting up Blue Pants for the double knees to the gut and you're all like, Blue Pants is going to counter it, John, you watch. And Sasha hit it and it looked devastating. I'm like, yeah, she countered it with gravity. So, yeah, that was great. Sasha goes for the pin, but then she pulls uh, Blue Pants up by her hair, so she breaks her own pinfall. And then I thought, oh, no way. Are they going to have it where Sasha is so overlooking Blue Pants and she gets the upset win? Thankfully, no. Um, she gets her in the uh, the back stabber position, the inverted lung blower, transitioning right into the bank statement, you know, the cross face. And Blue Pants does tab out, so Sasha Banks does get the victory. I really liked how they handled this dude. Yeah, it's awesome. So after that, we have Greg, ew, come in the ring and ask Sasha how does it feel or what does it mean to be NXT Women's Champion. And Sasha rightfully gives Greg a look and snatches the microphone out of his hand because, hello, first of all, who gave you the privilege to be in the ring with Sasha Banks? And second of all, who gave you permission to breathe her air? I, I don't, I, we really got to work that out. Um, but, you know, she gets on the microphone and she says, what does it mean? It means that Becky Lynch, Bailey, and especially you, Charlotte, will have to recognize me as the baddest diva in NXT. And she poses with her NXT women's title, and that's that segment. All is right with the world right now. She's sharing gimmicks with Eva Lise. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, she's amazing. So up next, we see footage of Sami Zayn after takeover rival. Uh, Regal came out to check on him. And then we got an interview with Dr. Chris Amon, who is the guy that basically uh, caused CM Punk to leave WWE. <laughs> yeah, pretty much um, uh, what was a little surprising was his prognosis was really optimistic. Said, you know, Sammy got all this testing and everything came out great. You know, he's in Abu Dhabi because, you know, nothing was medically stopping him. And he should be ready and ready to go whenever, you know, he sees fit. So, you know, maybe, maybe you know. So basically the equivalent of everything that CM Punk complained about. I have a concussion. Why are you letting me wrestle? <laughs> yeah, more or less. Because, I mean, he, he was so optimistic and, and so positive about that report that I just kind of wanted to look at him and be like, I, I even lost count of how many power bombs he ate. Sure, you surely didn't keep count, did you? Uh, but yeah, Sami Zayn. I guess his return will be whenever he decides it'll be. So Kevin Owens better watch himself. Yeah, buddy. And speaking of watching himself, I mean, did we get our our main event here or no? Yeah, we did. Adrian Neville versus Kevin Owens. Oh, and thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, this match was pretty ridiculous. I, I have three favorite spots I want to talk about, but until then, I just want you to kind of give your rundown. Oh, dude, well, I, I was kind of going to give it back to you then, because this match was so crazy. Dude, I loved how aggressive Adrian Neville was in the opening few minutes. He um, was on the attack, man. He really was, and, I mean, Kevin Owens was eating it, man, so I'm thinking, like, wow, if somebody solved the conundrum on Kevin Owens, hell, I mean, Adrian Neville even did a 450 from the apron, for God's sakes. I mean, he was bringing out the big guns to put a dent in Kevin Owens, and I love that. I love that these baby faces, when they have beef, just come out with guns loaded, and Adrian Neville certainly did that with Kevin Owens. Definitely, yeah. He, he was... I mean, it's like you said earlier, pissed off babyface can work pretty well sometimes. 
Absolutely, I can. You know, without question. I, I honestly, mean, in my opinion, that's the only kind of babyface that works. Definitely. I mean, that's look at Sami Zayn. He was starting to plateau, and then he got pissed off, and everything was better. Exactly. See, <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> but what I what I love most about this, and then I am going to hand it to you so that you can kind of talk about your three favorite spots and your notes and whatnot. But um, even with all the offense and Neville, I, I remember at one point Kevin Owens just immediately takes back control with a single knee gut buster. And that's just Kevin Owens. It's like, you can do all this work, you can create all these dents, but it just takes one maneuver. One maneuver from Kevin Owens compared to the flurry of offense from the opposition, whoever it is, and you're equalized. You're back on equal footing. And I love that we have a heel that that dominant, but at the same time, that dominant, but isn't like... The Big Show or Kane, where they have to say, "Oh, well, I'm that dominant because I'm a giant," or "I'm that dominant because I'm just the, the devil's favorite demon." He's just that dominant because you know he fights for a prize, and that's his prize, and he takes his work very seriously. Yep. Uh, nothing hokey about it, nothing caricature esque about it. He just goes in and he does business, and I love it like that, man. Yeah, absolutely. It. He's just such a beast. He is. So, speaking of him being a beast, go over some of your favorite moments from this match. Okay, well, first of all, the 450 to the outside was ridiculous. Yeah. Second of all, uh, what was it? There was another spot in the middle of the ring. Let me see if I can remember. I think it was Neville doing it to Owens. I mean, first of all, the spiked Hurricane Rana was pretty ridiculous. Yeah, big time. Uh oh, oh, the deadlift German suplex. Oh my god. Yeah, it was a great visual. And uh, and I love too uh from the production side of things cuz they showed it again in slow motion. Yeah. Those are the types of spots that slow motion was made for. Oh my god, it's... dude, he starts picking Owens up and that moment when Kevin Owens realizes that his body weight is being fully supported by Adrian Neville and he's not losing control the look on his face and he starts reaching his arms out like oh god please no 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 and Neville just keeps going and he's like screw you man you're going down I loved it we often say that Adrian Neville has the build of a super saiyan and it was like he was powering up to get that move out it's like I think he went super saiyan too yeah, it's like Kevin Owens is like a perfect cell or a Majin Buu, and Adrian Neville is just powering up. He's like, no, 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 and then he gets in, but then he, of course, is able to regenerate because he's Kevin Owens and he's unfreaking stoppable. But yeah, it was a great moment for Super Saiyan Neville, nonetheless. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but then the third spot, Kevin Owens toss-up power bomb. Dude, his power bombs look like. What would happen if a jackknife power bomb was somehow made even more devastating? You know what I love, and, and, and you know me well enough, Ash, and we've had so many wrestling conversations. You know what my tastes are, what my distastes are. I love the old school feel of Kevin Owens' finisher because it's nothing too flashy. It's, I guess, a little bit explosive in the sense that it's got that suddenness going for it. But, I mean, it's like you said, it's like that throwback to Kevin Nash's jackknife, and I love that. Yeah. I love that a move like that can get a three count, because I guarantee you, I mean, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong, but I wouldn't be surprised, I'll put it that way, if we saw people commenting, oh, that's his finisher, that's just a power bomb. But Kevin Owens is such a delivery that I could buy that beating anybody, especially after they had the clinic that these two had. And you have to imagine that Adrian Neville was just spent. So getting hit with something like that, it's just a shock to the system, and he's down for the count. Um, so really good stuff. Just the overall packaging of Owens has it, just been so perfect. And to get that kind of a definitive win like that his first night as NXT World Champion, I, I think is just awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Owens comes away from this looking like an absolute beast. Adrian Neville comes away from this looking no worse for wear because he still put up an amazing fight, took Owens to the limit. This match was wonderful. This show, because this was the main event, but this show was wonderful. And just, I love NXT so much. I can't wait for next week already. Oh, you and me both, because, I mean, this was the fallout from NXT TakeOver Rival. But now, I mean, we're really getting 
back on track. Again, we saw some future storylines, you know, laid out. Uh, Solomon Crow, Kevin Owens making his mark. So now we're moving forward. Now, I mean, TakeOver Rival really is in the past. I don't think there's any more need to wrap anything up with that. And now that we're going forward, the future looks absolutely incredible and oh so inviting. I can't wait to be a part of it. But with that said, if you have anything else you want to say, we can get right into our next segment. Yeah. All right. High spots and low shots. And you know what? I got to say, for everything, my low shot is going to have to be the vaude villains. They lose again. You're talking about the guys that even when they weren't the champions, I feel like they were one of the standard bearers of what it means to be a strong tag team and to be a consistent fixture in the title pitcher. But now, and nothing against these guys because I love them, but they lost to Enzo and Big Cass, a team that, while very charismatic and beloved up until now, was really seen more as like a comedy team, a team to get everybody energized, but nothing to really take too seriously, especially as it relates to Enzo Amore. And now those guys are where the vaude villains used to be. Things haven't gotten any better for these guys. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they had a pretty brutal night tonight, I have to say. And I think my low shot is going to be, man, I could take the vaude villains too, but you know what? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna go the super duper easy way, and and I'm gonna say C.J. Parker because he wanted so badly to end his show, and he wanted to just he just wanted he just wanted to be on on Takeover Arrival, and he wasn't there, and he got angry about it, and he threw a little tantrum, and it didn't work out for him. So sad day for C.J. And then he got beat up by a debuting Solomon Crow. So he he continues to be the definitive stepping stone of NXT. Absolutely. I completely agree with your assessment, which leaves the high spot. Oh, crap, is this hard. Um, You know what? I'm going to take the super easy route, too. My high spot is Kevin Owens, because he just does not give a single crap about anything, and it's working out just fine for him. Yeah. He doesn't care what edicts William Regal lays down. He doesn't care what threats Adrian Neville spits in his face. You could substitute Adrian Neville for Sami Zayn, and then the result's the same there. All Kevin Owens cares about is sticking to his game plan, and he's doing it to perfection. He forced me to give him the high spot, because while it was a crowded class, he stood head and shoulders above all of them. Fight Owens fight, baby. Yep, fight Owens fight. My high spot is going to be, well, I could go with Rhino, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like that would be kind of robbing it from somebody more deserving. So I think my high spot is just going to be sticking with the theme of that segment, Solomon Crow, because like I said, man, he won me over. I'm a fan after one segment, and that's difficult to do. Absolutely. You know, I mean, we would talk about the Jim Ross philosophy of maximizing your minutes, and clearly, as is the case with your fandom and Solomon Crow, Solomon Crow did that. Yep. So I'm going to be very intrigued what he does going forward. Again, I do have that history of watching him in Force One, so I kind of know a little bit what he can bring to the table, but this is a whole other gimmick. So I'm curious to see where they go with it. So excellent choice for your high spot. And now with that out of the way, we don't have any other segments. So again, unless you have anything else you want to say, I'm going to take this baby home. Take her home, baby. All right, guys, this has been NXT. This has been Twit Wow, the best wrestling podcast made for wrestling fans by wrestling fans on the web today. I'm John. That's my cohort and commentary, Ashton. Guys, be sure to comment and subscribe on YouTube. What did you think of Solomon Crow's debut? Were you a fan, or is it still going to take you a little bit of time? What about Kevin Owens' dominant performance as of late? What did you think of his main event bout against Adrian Neville? Be sure to take the conversation over to Puitoff, an amazing pro wrestling group on Facebook filled with the most wonderful wrestling fans you'll ever meet. And we will see you again Saturday, as a matter of fact, for our Fast Lane preview and predictions. And, of course, Sunday, it's must-tune-in content as you get to see me and Ashton let our freak flags fly with Fast Lane live reactions where the question looms. Who is punching their ticket to WrestleMania 31 to face the Beast incarnate Brock Lesnar? Will it be the Mastodon Roman Reigns? 
or the yes man, Daniel Bryan? We find out Sunday. And until then, guys, you know what to do. Tune in. Peace out.